Hello and welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, hosted by Virtual Patent Gateway and led by Sheena Yap Chan. Virtual Patent Gateway founder Ashley Chung has a passion for supporting the next generation in the workplace and is committed to developing a growth mindset within VPG. She is currently serving as one of the vice chairs of the Diversity Committee of the PTAB Bar Association. Sheena is a keynote speaker, consultant, and author on building self-confidence. She is also the co-author of the international best-selling books, Asian Women Who Boss Up and International Women of Color Who Boss Up. Her newest book, The Tao of Self-Confidence, will be released on May 23rd and is available for pre-order now. Sheena is also the founder and host of the award-winning podcast called The Tao of Self-Confidence, where she interviews Asian women about their inner journey to self-confidence. Sheena has been featured on Mind Valley, Fox, Thrive Global, Manila Times, and more. She is the top 10 self-confidence slash self-love coach to follow as featured in Disrupt Magazine. We'd also like to take a moment to thank our program sponsors who have made this program possible. And with that, I will hand things over to Ashley. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our AAPI um, Heritage Month program today. And I am. it is my privilege to introduce you to Shina Yap Chen. And we've actually initially met on LinkedIn by just liking each other's posts in March 2022. So it's been a little bit over a year. And since then, we really have done a lot of collaboration and we have found really great support of each other. So I really want to thank you for that. And at the beginning, we in the beginning, we were thinking about just her talking for an hour, but we decided to wing this. So without further ado, let me go ahead and um, have Sheena say hi to everyone and then we will get on our non-scripted chat about her journey of the Tao of self-confidence, Sheena. Hi, Ashley. First off, I just want to say thank you for everything you've done, your continued support. I mean, I can't believe we've known each other for over a year and you've always been there. Um, you know, no matter what, you've always been such a great support and I'm just really grateful to call you as a friend. And I'm sorry I had to step out really quickly, you know, just time when you're at home, things just happen. Like people came in to like drop off some furniture at the same time this was happening. So I apologize. It just went kind of crazy a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I'm just really grateful to be here. A little bit about me. My name is Sheena Yapchan. Um, everything really started with my podcast, The Top Self-Confidence, where I interview Asian women about their journey to self-confidence. And that was really important for me just because growing up in Toronto in the 90s, you know, I never saw anybody that looked like me on any form of media. And so I was always ashamed of being Asian. You know, I wanted to have blonde hair and blue eyes to assimilate to Western culture. And, you know, I even wanted to change my name to sound more Western. And it wasn't until my 20s where I decided to um, dye my hair back from blonde to my original hair color and that's where I felt you know I started embracing my Asian heritage I was like this is me this is who I am I have small eyes a flat nose I'll have black hair and I'm really okay with it and in 2015 as I was looking for resources that cater to Asian women's confidence I couldn't find any because you know I was dealing with my own issues and so part of me thought maybe something was wrong with me and then I realized culturally we're not told to talk about how we feel right uh, so I started the podcast interviewing all these amazing Asian women, including Ashley, who is also a guest on my show. And I've interviewed over 700 Asian women from around the world talking about, you know, different stories, how they're able to overcome their confidence issues to be who they are today. And this is the type of thing that I was looking for, you know, not really like feeling like I'm not the only one dealing with these things. Um, and, you know, I always want to create better visibility, especially for Asian women, because we're constantly seen by our negative stereotypes. And so in 2021, um, we launched this book, Asian Women Who Boss Up, which highlights the stories of 18 Asian women who are able to forge their own path, overcome obstacles and thrive. And I think Ashley has something cool later on. So make sure you stay till the end. And and then May 23, which is next Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. I have my upcoming book, The Tao of Self-Confidence a guide to moving beyond trauma and awakening the leader within coming out in all major bookstores and uh, across the world. Um, this has been such a surreal experience being able to write a book 
in less than three months for one of the top publishers in the world. And to be honest, I didn't even think this was in the cards for me. You know, I was, I was really like, you know, okay, doing the work that I was doing, but even doing this, I was so scared to write this book because I didn't know if I was that person, right? It's like, we go through imposter syndrome. We're like, who am I to write a book about Asian women leadership? Uh, who am I to talk about confidence? And this is, you know, this stems from our upbringing, right? We feel like we're never enough, but I realized I had to do this, write this book, showcase, you know, more Asian women in leadership roles, show them what's possible. Because especially in North America, you know, we have one of the lowest representations of Asian women leadership. Um, in 2021, Catalyst Inc. mentioned that um, Asian women only represented 2.7% in high corporate roles. Uh, and it fell down later last year by 80%. So what are we left with, right? And it's like, why is it that we have one of the lowest uh, levels of leadership in North America? So this what this is what really got me started, right? What is holding us back to keep moving forward to show up as our best self? Um, you know, because I know we've all go gone through some form of trauma or there's something holding us back or we, you know, we have, um, you know, our mental health might not be the greatest. And especially this month, you know, it's not only AAPI Heritage Month, but Mental Health Awareness Month. So it's important to talk about these things, to be okay to talk about it, to normalize it so that we can find ways to um, heal it, right? And move forward and show up as our best self. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> and I'm currently in Toronto, Canada. That's awesome. I really like that, um, you know, how you described the process of it. The first, very first question that I have is that the journey leading you to um, where you are today, having one of your major publisher to um, sign you for a book, can you talk a little bit about the process of you building your community? Yeah, I mean, it didn't happen overnight, right? I mean, I started my podcast in 2015. So it's been like almost eight years, right? Um, being able to build this platform, being able to build a community, being able to speak up. Um, and you know, the first five years, I was, I actually delayed my own success because I always kept on feeling like I was never good enough, right? Who am I to do this? Who am I to go out there and speak on stages? Like so much confidence issues, even though I had a podcast about confidence, right? Um, and so, so yeah, like, being able to just keep moving forward, I realized even though I may not be sure of myself, I know I have something here that could really change the world, that can change the way we're seen in, in any form of media, right? Instead of being seen as quiet, submissive, and obedient, I, I want Asian women to be seen as strong and confident um, and, and, and courageous, right? Being able to break barriers, make history. Uh, you know, we've seen some of that already, but, you know, we need more, right? I mean, with the uh, recent wins of um, everything, everywhere, all at once, you know, that was monumental, being able to break all kinds of barriers, Hollywood getting a name, the Asian community getting a name in Hollywood, but what about the rest of us? What about all the other industries? Where's the voices for them, right? So now we have to keep um, writing that, right? Like now we have this platform, how can we transfer it in all others, other industries? Like Ashley, you're in, you're in the law industry and you know, if you look at the stats, I mean, Asian women probably make up like what, two to 4% if we're lucky um, in the law industry. And it's not an easy, easy industry to be in, right? It's this highly stressful industry. Um, and, you know, there's not a lot of representation. So how do we create representation for women in law, women in corporate, women in the in the creative arts, women in, in um, you know, healthcare. Like there's so many industries that still need a voice and we have to keep moving forward, making changes, being that change, right? I realized if I wanted to have representation, I had to start with myself, even if it meant starting from zero and not having a clue on what to do and how to start this thing. Like when I started my podcast, I didn't even know what a podcast was. <laughs> like I just saw it on Apple iTunes one day and I had, I had no idea. I had to invest, you know, in a mastermind to figure it out what it was. And, um, you know, I even delayed that because I thought, who's going to listen to me? Who's going to listen to this crazy Asian girl interviewing other Asian women, right? Um, and then back then, there was hardly any Asian people podcasting. There was like one guy doing that, you know, elevating our community. And I saw him and I said, if he's doing it, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So, um, you know, we just all got to start somewhere. Well, I mean, I think starting somewhere is is really important because like all it takes is like one person and then we have like this 
domino effect of having people to know that if someone else can do it, we can also do it. You know, just having that community, knowing that all it takes is one person to start, I think, to be the change agent of, um, to help others know that you're not alone. I think that voice is super important. And I, I have a funny story to tell about like, I don't know if you are aware of this particular influencer. He's, he's like um, a major like motivational speaker at my lab. And he wrote a book called The Power of One More. When he started his podcast, he didn't know what he was doing. And so he was like talking to like some other people and he didn't even know what hashtag is. So he kept talking to his son or somebody and he's like, well, we need to add some hash brown to this. <laughs> like, and, then, and then like the families are obviously has been very confused about this but you know it's i mean he's like really really rich and very like um important uh motivational speaker but it's just show it just kind of goes to show that we all have to start somewhere and when we did not have a when we don't really have a community it's only because not yet you know it's um and i think that that is super important for people to know and i just also want to say that when you interview me for your podcast the dial of self-confidence i was super nervous and um i'm still kind of nervous but you know it is what it is um but i think that i don't know if you recall but i'm like when do i get to review and approve this and then, you know, because that's really the environment that I was in. I'm not an attorney. So review and approval process is super important. So I was so anxious. Like I had so much anxiety. I was like, oh my God. And when you told me, oh, it's going to be released today. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I think you would have a chance. But you know what? It really, after that, it really helped me to realize that, you know what? At least that's the real me, right? And sometimes, and I, like coming up from an Asian American culture, I'm originally from Hong Kong. So there's been really interesting, there's a lot of interesting journey and through talking to different people and you actually help a lot in terms of um helping us to interview some of our guests for the virtual water cooler chat because i didn't really know what i was doing i was just one day i told kaylin hey we're gonna start a podcast yeah so we started on january 9th and it's like i'm a very meticulous planner yeah so i was like okay we're gonna do two episodes each each month but then it's like wait a minute i have way too many people to interview or yeah. chat with so original our original intention for the vwcc podcast it was like 24 in tw 24 people in 2023 and now we are going to and you are one of the uh, guests that we actually interview and i remember when you were actually in the buildings at the time when we were like doing the interview but now i think by the end of 2023 we'll have 35 episodes release it's amazing i know and we we've done most of the actual recording already it yeah. is really difficult to um set up the appointment with all these really busy professionals and we have some really amazing people and i think the journey of sharing especially on the women empowerment theme asian or not i mean i obviously i'm asian american i definitely support asian american but i think that it is important to support each other, women, men, doesn't matter, because there are many men that actually support women empowerment. Oh, yeah. So um, <laughs> I don't want to really single out a gender, but you know, it's just that at this time, it is important for me to explore this particular portion of the journey. And I think that you are an amazing human being for uh -huh. just basically being there and show us the Dao <laughs> to <laughs> self-confidence and sometimes it's like it's definitely not easy but having others being there yeah helps yeah. now but can you tell us 
do how do you get your moral support and who are the source of your support i mean that's a great question of course right i think in asian culture you know we've been programmed that we have to do everything ourselves and never ask for help because it's seen as a weakness or or a handout but being able trying to do everything yourself you're gonna get burnt out right you're not gonna want to do it and you're gonna feel like you're just never enough right like when you started your podcast you didn't do it all yourself you know you reached out to me uh you have a team and you've been able to produce a podcast because it you have a team that's helping you right and you know having that help makes it all worthwhile because then you can focus on your own things right your business your clients your th- your magic um and so for me having support is very important right like um my bo- the women who boss up community has been a huge moral support for me um being part of that you know it's just great to be surrounded with so many other female entrepreneurs you know from different walks of life I mean, what I love our commu- about our community is just it's so diverse, right? If you've seen photos of us or group photos, it's like, you know, it's true diversity. You know, <laughs> um, it's not just like one person from each culture. It's literally different and different personalities, different businesses, and really being there for each other. You know, and that's what it should be. And you're right, there are amazing men out there who also support women empowerment. I mean, I was just an event at an event yesterday um, for a networking event. Um, you know, there. I have a picture of like four guys holding up this book and I'm in the middle and it's like, that is so amazing, right? To have that kind of support um, because we should be all working together, especially when we have a similar vision to elevate our communities, to fight the injustices we see. And like I said, change doesn't happen just by doing it yourself. Change happens when we all do it together. So, you know, having that community is really important for me. Uh, my friends and family are also a very good support system even though sometimes they don't understand what i'm doing they're there for me right and sometimes our families don't understand what we're doing right because they're so used to one way of life you know especially when you come from a culture where the same way to live your life is is passed on from generation to generation to generation that is all they know right Our, our parents come to canada and america to give us a better life and sometimes their definition of a better life is go to school get a job and just work till you're 60. Nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. Totally fine, right? Everyone's definition of success is different. But there's some people who don't want that, right? Who feel like they need to do more. And for me, that's what it was. You know, I would sit in my cubicle and be like, there has to be something more than just this. Like, I just couldn't see myself doing that. Um, And so, you know, especially after my aunt passed away from a horrific accident 12 years ago, or 11 years ago, um, I realized, you know, I can't, I got to do something for myself or I look back and just have full of regret. Um, So even though when I stepped out and did my own thing, my parents, you know, didn't agree with it. They didn't understand it, but they understood that this is what I wanted to do. Right. And, you know, we come to this country for better opportunities and, you know, we got to shoot our shot. Right. Like, even if it means falling down a hundred times, being rejected, being ghosted. And, you know, I got rejected all the time. You know, I got told so many times that my story was too specific or catered to a specific audience. And I was like, what does that even mean? Is it because I look a certain way? You think I can only relate to people within my culture? We all go through trauma. We all go through confidence issues. We go, we all go through leadership um, issues. Even with this upcoming book, you know, the common question I get is, can people outside the Asian culture relate to it? It's like, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't it, right? You would never ask Tony Robbins or Jack Canfield if their books can relate to people outside of their culture. You would never ask, you know, Paw Patrol if they could if they could relate to people that aren't even dogs, right? But people love them, right? People can relate to them. So it's like, are you questioning my ability to relate to other people? Because, you know, people from wa- all walks of life are pre-ordering this book. In fact, you know, I just saw people buy Um, you know, sharing the books now from different cultures. And I love that, right? Because I believe our specific stories is what gives us new solutions, different perspective on things. And even if they can't relate to us, we can learn something new, right? It's I love learning, you know, um, different things from other people's cultures. You know, traveling is one thing I love to do because I love to see what other people are doing, how they live their life, uh, looking at different um, monuments or tourist attractions. And so it's important to have diverse books it's important to share specific stories because we can relate to each and every single person right um especially people in underrepresented communities you know we go through negative stereotypes we go through um you know being gaslighted 
we we go through racism, you know, <laughs> I mean, we go through unfair, like, but there's so many things we can relate to. So it's, it's sometimes like, it's just mind boggling. Sometimes that I get this question, even though it's 2023, where we're in the world of we're supposed to have more diversity, right? But yet constantly, it's like, well, can you relate to this person? Can you it's like, yes, of course I can, right? Of course I can. Even if I can't, they learn something new. Um, so let's just normalize that each we're all human beings. We all have our stories to tell and we all can bring something to the table. Um, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Do you use... <laughs> You're like, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I told you that I'm winging it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, talk about how you handle rejection. I mean, you know, I had all kinds of rejections, whether it's a speaking gig, um, a TEDx event, uh, even an interview, you know, they would be like, I don't think your story would fit because it just feels like you're catering to a specific audience. Just because I talk about Asian women doesn't mean I can only relate to Asian women. You know, women generally, you know, we go through so many things, right? Um, even Asian men go through confidence issues, right? Go through stress, go feel like they have to like live a certain way or be that person so you know whatever i talk about at least one person can relate to something right or if not they can always learn something new you know we like a great example is k-dramas you know k-dramas has one of the most diverse audiences in the world first of all everything's in korean and you'd be surprised how many people are learning korean just so they can watch k-dramas properly right so they can understand that they don't have to read subtitles and i mean you know that should be proof that just because it seems it seems like it's catering to a specific audience, it can be a global thing, right? We can make it global. Like look at BTS, look at Blackpink, um, look at the cover um, from Vogue Philippines that was last month or the month before. The oldest the oldest uh, Vogue cover model ever was a hundred and six year old Filipino woman who's a tattoo artist in like a small rural town in the Philippines. And I remember sharing that on LinkedIn. It's gotten almost thirty thousand likes and literally praise from people all over the world. So not just Filipino people, everybody. Everybody loved it, right? Because it was such a powerful cover, showing this woman's strength, you know, being able to say like, you know, especially for women, ageism is something that we deal with all the time, right? But here's a woman at 106 years old, still thriving, still, still alive, still showcasing her strength and authentic beauty. And it was just one of the most powerful covers I have ever seen in my entire life. And I was just so proud to share it out to the world. Like, wow, I wish, you know, we had more covers like this. And I think now um, Swimsuit Illustrated just released their their cover of Martha Stewart being the oldest cover model on, on, in their magazine. So, you know, it's just show, it just goes to show what's possible, right? And we shouldn't let age get in the way. We shouldn't, you know, let our circumstances get in the way. I mean, yes, this all like challenges will always happen. Challenges will arise, but we also have the confidence to keep moving forward. And so at first I would be, I would feel so bad about myself thinking like, is that really the only thing I can do? I can only relate to Asian women. And so of course, sometimes as women too, when we don't do the work, when someone tells you something, it becomes your absolute truth even though it's just one person's opinion, you know, it's just how they perceive it. But you know, in your heart, you can relate to as many people as you want, right? Whatever short story you tell, it, it can relate to someone. Um, and so, you know, I had to work on myself to realize, you know, I'm not going to base my worth on someone who tells me I can't relate to people when I know I can relate to people because people come up to me all the time telling me how they're inspired, that they love what I do, that you know, they love this different perspective, right? And it, it took me a while to get over that as well. Do you have any specific strategies of overcoming fear, especially when you are trying to boss up? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is why having a community is so important, right? You don't have to face your fears alone, right? So... I remember when I did my first YouTube video, it was bad. <laughs> you know, it took me two hours to do a two minute video and it was horrendous. Um, but I realized that because I was part of a women's community at the time, there were other women who were just as scared as me putting up their first YouTube video. And knowing that I realized we can face these fears together as she's putting up her first video. 
I'm putting up my first video. So this is why having a community is important because if you're scared, someone will push you off the cliff to get that done and then you'll feel better. You realize you didn't die, you're still standing and then your confidence just, just grows, right? And so I realized I don't always have to face my fears alone, right? I can always, you know, do it with other people or have support or read people's stories because even the most famous people in the world still go through fear, right? But they utilize that fear to keep moving forward versus holding them back. So like, um, I remember two years ago, I was uh, invited to do a, a live interview on CGTN, which is like a huge network in China. I didn't know how big it was until I Googled them on Facebook or like uh, search for them on Facebook. They have 110 million followers and I was basically on a prime time show with an award-winning host. So I was like so nervous. I was so scared. I was gonna like mess up on live Chinese television. Um, at one point I even blanked out because he asked me a question and I literally blanked out for a good two to five seconds. And if he didn't have a follow-up question, I probably would have blanked out a lot longer on national Chinese television. But after that, I was like, well, you know, if that was the worst that could happen, I mean, you know, I can take on a lot more stuff, right? That was really nothing. Sometimes we take this fear and we think it's like the biggest thing ever and we can't, um, you know, we can't achieve it or we can't overcome it. Um, and so, you know, once we do overcome it, you're like, it wasn't as bad as I thought, right? Um, and so this is why having community is important. You don't have to do everything alone, right? We can, you can do it together, um, by listening to people's stories, by joining a community, reading, reading books, listening to podcasts, knowing that we know how you feel, but I know you could do it and we got you. We, we are going to keep rooting for you to overcome these fears. Okay. Let's flip this a little bit. Yeah. No. We've kind of talked about the fear of failure right now. Yeah. But how about the fear of success? Oh, yeah. I mean, I would fear success <laughs> all the time, right? I'm like, oh, my God. When I hit this, you know, I don't know if I can handle it. I don't know if I, I'll be able to, do, to achieve what I want to achieve. But you have to understand that you know, whoever you believe in the universe or God or whoever wouldn't put you in this position if you weren't ready, right? Sometimes we end up in these like, what did I just do to myself type of situations, knowing, not realizing that it's being set up for something great, right? I always say whatever situation with it we are in, it's either a blessing or a lesson. Um, so I had to realize like, I can't get scared anymore, right? I'm in this position for a reason, right? I'm given this opportunity for a reason and I have to go out there and do it. Like writing this book was so terrifying for me. You don't understand how terrifying it was. Like knowing that I'm going to be writing a book about leadership. Like, are people even going to read this? Are they going to like what, that, what I wrote? Are they going to relate to it? Am I even that person? You know, what should I do? Um, but I realized I had to do it, right? I had to do it because there's few books out there that, you know, that's on leadership coming from an Asian woman. You know, the publishing industry is still very... Um, you know, 75% is still Caucasian, right? And so I need to break that number down, even if it's just 1%, right? Um, and showcase what's what's possible, right? I so, and, and so I had to just get out of my own way to go out there and do it and just be prepared for whatever happens, right? Um, and and uh, yeah, it just takes a lot of work. This is why also having a community is important, right? You're not the only one going through this. And when you can talk it out with someone else, they give you a perspective of, of something and you're like, oh, yeah, you're right, right? Because especially when we're trying to do everything ourselves, we have a lot of blind spots. And of course, we can't see those blind spots, right? Because we're too, you know, focused on ourselves. Like even driving a car, you have a rear, rear, rear view mirror to check out the blind spots. So, you know, in our own life, we need something to help check us our check our blind spots, whether it's hiring a coach, joining a community, reading books, um, listening to stories, right? That will help us find our blind spots and, you know, find ways to fix that. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about your book? Do you have a favorite chapter? Um, well, there's only eight chapters. So, um, I mean, there's definitely favorite things that I really love, especially like being able to watch like my favorite movies led by an all Asian American cast, like Turning Red 
and Joy Luck Club and kind of like just watching and dissecting it, you know, especially when it comes to intergenerational trauma, because that's something that's really prevalent in our community, right? People don't realize, you know, we may carry our own burdens, but we also carry the burdens of our parents, grandparents, our ancestors, and that how how that affects us in our everyday life, right? Um, and like Turning Red is one of my favorites. First of all, it's set in my city. <laughs> so you get to <laughs> monuments. And even that movie got um, slammed thinking that, you know, it catered to a specific audience. And I'm like, every girl can relate to being a 12 year old girl going through puberty, getting their period for the first time. Okay. Just because she's an Asian girl doesn't mean it only catered to the Asian community. Right. As every little girl, we were all awkward. We didn't know how to act. You know, you know, we start learning about our bodies and, you know, learning to come out as our true selves. And then also trying to fight with the expectation from our parents. Right. Um, How do we navigate that when you're like 12 years old? It's hard. Right. And then, you know, every 12 year old girl had a boy boy band they loved, right? Like, you know, whether it was like New Kids on the Block and Sync or whoever, right? Um, BTS. So everyone can relate to that. But yeah, that was really my, what, that's one of my most um, fun experiences, just being able to watch that and kind of dissect it. Um, and I also share a bit about my sister's story because, you know, she's in a uh, same sex relationship. And, you know, when you're Asian, that's always hard, right? It's hard when you don't have supportive parents. I mean, we were very fortunate that our parents were super supportive, right? Um, you know, that she was, you know, that she is in a, in a relationship with another woman. But, you know, she had to hide that for a long time, right? Because we didn't know if our re relatives would accept her. You know, we come from a very conservative Chinese family. Um, and then, you know, last December, they got married in the Philippines. And we still had to kind of hide that because we didn't know what the outcome was. but. When you live in a small town in the Philippines where everybody knows everybody and you use the same vendors, it was bound to come out. So it came out, but, but we were re we were really fortunate that everyone accepted her with open arms. And it was the first time she was able to finally like share her truth on social media, being like, I married the love of my life. And not every Asian person gets that, right? Especially if they're in the LGBTQ community not everyone gets that because especially when you have Asian parents, it's always the extremes, right? They either accept you or they just disown you. There's no middle ground, right? So, I mean, I hope her story can also help out a lot of, you know, um, you know, a, you know, the Asian community who do have same sex partners, right? Who are gay or lesbian, uh, you know, who are in the LGBTQ community, uh, because it's important, right? It's important to have this kind of support, especially when you feel like, you're still trapped, right? In your own own body, own self, not being able to come out because she had to live a double life for so long. Um, and, and you know, it's, it's, I can only imagine what she had to go through, right? Because like, that's, I'm sure that's not easy to navigate. So, I mean, we're, we're fortunate we live in Canada where, you know, it's like one of the biggest like LGBTQ communities in the world. So, you know, here she got to live her true self, but every time we would go back to the Philippines, it was hard. You know, she had to hide everything. Um, and that's not always easy. <laughs> I love Toronto, especially the Chinese food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Toronto has every every cuisine in the world, right? It's one of yes. the most multicultural cities in the world. Um, but, you know, there's still we still lack a lot of representation. So it's important that we keep doing this work, right? And like Toronto has one of the biggest Asian communities in, in Canada. so. Like, you know, being able to attend um, the event last night, it was just great to see other people in the Asian community who have that same vision to elevate our voices beyond our community as well, right? Because we are a multicultural city, we should all be working together because we all go through similar things and just talking about the issues and things like that and knowing that you don't have to do everything alone, right? There's so many people out there who's gonna, um, you know, who, who'll do this with you, right? Uh, who have their best interest to make a better tomorrow and make a positive impact. So I'm just really fortunate that, you know, there's really good people out there, good support, people like you, um, who's constantly always like one of the greatest supporters in the world. And, you know, every day I'm grateful for that. I don't know if I ever told you that, but every day I am really grateful for that. So I hope you understand, like, you are such a powerhouse. And I know you've had your fair share of challenges as well. Um, and I know it's not easy. I, I totally get it's not easy, especially being an Asian woman, not being taken seriously, 
but when we do things together when we do shows like this podcasts you know we just we we are able to create a better representation for our community right and it goes beyond that well thank you for that um what are some of the major stereotypes that you think that asian american women or asian women um or women in general still fight and that you hope to have using this book to help them overcome yeah i mean you know i think as women too you know it doesn't help that hollywood always paints this picture that like you know prince charming is coming to save us so sometimes we don't go out there and make the first move right um and and it's like it feels shameful if we do but you know i'm i go out there and reach out to people you know i mean i reached out to you that's how we met but i'm a firm believer like be okay to make the first move right because that's how you create the opportunities that you want and especially as asian women that's not typical right if you go to networking events um there's hardly any asian women out there you know they don't really know what to do or what to say or even just asking a simple question is like scary right because we're we're so afraid that we're going to ask a stupid question and for me i you know i'll even say this might be a stupid question but i'm going to ask anyway right because i mean for me it's like i just want to know the answer um and so for me like i just hope this book helps them realize they can go out there and make the first move they have the permission to go out there and do the things that they want um and you know be okay with that right like especially in asian culture it's like you're either you know you're told to get a job get married have kids run the household and that's it um versus like you know nobody tells us you know if you want things to happen you got you got to go out there and make the first move make changes reach out to people right what's the worst that could happen they say no or they ghost you right i mean i know that because i've been through that as well right but if that's the worst case scenario just go out there and do it because you never know you know you can reach out to that one person who's going to connect you to another person who's going to connect you to another person it becomes a whole domino effect um and so i focus on that i focus on the people who reach out who reply back who i can connect with like ashley you know um since then we've been doing so many different things together right and it's just because i reached out to her um and it's just such a you know it's such a simple thing to do but i know it's not easy because sometimes we overthink it we think well what if they say no what if they think i'm crazy i mean you know at this point it's like we have one life to live and it's like how do you want to live that life right do you want to live your life full of fear or do you really want things to happen for you so for me it's like as women we should be okay to make that first move and i know there's so many double standards right but the more we keep doing it normalizing it you know we become courageous and confident versus as being too ambitious right or being too much because guys do it all the time and they get praised for it well why can't women so yeah <laughs> so one of my favorite quote and i don't remember who said it is that you only die once but yeah. you live every day yeah so i i really do try to practice that and i really do appreciate you like basically complimenting me and applauding me for the effort it's definitely not easy just like yours um i have been very like growing up it's i have been taught to be obedient and basically I, i'm i'm really good in terms of supporting like my family my parents um in 2017 when my dad passed away and I think we've talked about it, and that's why I was like oh my god I was like tearing up I cannot have that podcast go out and but you know it's like that facade that you have to be perfectly composed nobody can really tell that you are vulnerable inside it's really the things that really I think sometimes it hurts women because they think that they have to we think that we have to be a hundred percent perfect in order to get what we want and Brene Brown who talks about vulnerability a lot and I really like her work there's other women Deepak Kurushman who talk about shredding the images that harm us also on one of our uh, virtual what if we'll chat podcast interview I love her work and she was the first Indian American woman that made partner at Deloitte. That's huge. That's huge. That, that is, is huge. And I contacted her and said, I read a book. And I said, 
may I interview you? She was like, sure. <laughs> That's all it really takes. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, and I think that part of it is like what I'm. Well, I don't really like the numbers of representation of um, women in law. I do see more um, voices, people coming out to speak up. Like for example, the PCAP Bar Association had a study a couple of years ago. Twelve percent, I think, approximately twelve percent of uh, women who enter appearances in PCAP. And really, that's one of the things that I really wanted to do is to give women practitioners because that's an area that I really care about. You know, pen trial and appeal board with the USPO is what I really, I really worked at in litigation for about 23, 24 years. Three of them were in construction, the rest of them in, in uh, intellectual property. So I supported some leading practitioners and um, I've done district court cases, I've done ITC cases. <laughs> Most people know that I don't care for ITC cases for my own sanity reason. But um, I have orders, you know, admiration and respect for those who can. But PTAP is actually an area that I decided that it's actually something I really am passionate about. So I have joined the Bar Association while, and I'm not an attorney. Talk about non-belonging. <laughs> you are not an attorney, you're going to join a Bar Association. Where do you check in your box, right? And I remember when I first joined, I was super self-conscious and not really able to like, like, what can I actually add to this? But you know what? The important thing is the turning point is that when I start taking myself out of the equation, it's not about me. You know, it's like just like when you wrote the Tao of self-confidence, the imposter syndrome, who are you to write this? It's not about you in my opinion, is about the service that you are giving to the community. That voice that you are providing so that other people can actually feel that, oh, you know, maybe I'm not so alone. See, Shina Ya Chan can do it. We can probably do it too. You can definitely do it. Not Baby step. You can definitely do it. <laughs> Anything is really possible, right? And sometimes, you know, social media can be, you know, it can it can make us th think of things that, you know, oh, well, she's so, life is so easy for her because she made it, ha like, you know, she's so successful now, but nobody realizes, like, you know, took work day in and day out to get to where I am today, right? If you see successful people, they always had their fair share of challenges and setbacks and pushback um, and not... And most people aren't willing to see, to see that, right? Because all they see is like the the results, not realizing like, I mean, you look at Michelle Yeoh, you look at Kiwi Kwan, you look at James Hong. They've been in the in Hollywood for so long. James Hong, almost seven decades before he even got recognized, right? Um, or attend his first Oscars par, uh, ceremony. Um, you know, Michelle Yeoh, over four decades, Kiwi Kwan had to leave Hollywood because there was no roles for him. And then, you know, um, after watching Crazy Rich Asians revived his career and look where he is today. He has one of the best comeback stories ever. And I love his story. Every time I watch his interviews, I start crying because I'm just so happy. And I'm just like, this is what re this is why representation is so important, because it shows us what's possible. And it's OK to be vulnerable. Right. So I know with vulnerability is seen as our weakness, but that is our greatest strength. And I know it doesn't help that, like. Our grandmothers would, you know, they're, they've been taught all their life to never talk about the things that happened to them, right? There's stories till this day that I will never know about my grandmothers because it's just like they're sworn to secrecy. And it's like, if they don't talk about it, then it never happened. And this is the constant problem we have with the Asian community. If we don't talk about it, it never happened. But yet we constantly get um, attacked in anti-Asian hate crimes. You know, our elderly keeps getting attacked for that reason because they know we're not going to say anything and this is why it's so important to speak up it's it's so important to you know talk about the things we go through right and i'm not saying it's all our fault of course there's still other factors right racism in canada and america has been happening for centuries but there's this misconception that it only happened during the pandemic 
Um, you know, we've, it's been happening forever. I mean, Chinese Exclusion Act is like, you know, one of the most prevalent things. I think there's nothing more racist than that. Um, but like, you know, we have to speak up. Staying silent is, is literally killing us, right? We need our voices to be heard. We need to talk about the things we go through, right? I mean, one of the things that always frustrates me is that every time there's an attack in our community, it's like nobody talks about how the victim's doing, right? It's always about the attacker and their life story and they humanize them. But what about the effects of the victim, right? What about the trauma she's going through or the mental health issues she's going through? Nobody talks about what they had to go through to even just get into this country. And even like the recent shooting in Allen, Texas. I mean, that, you know, that was senseless. And now a six-year-old boy is left with no family because of that, right? He can never get his family back. It's great that they were able to raise enough money for him to be okay. But, you know, all the money in the world can't bring his mother, his father, and his brother back, right? All because of a senseless crime that didn't have to happen. You know, they just went to the mall that day to exchange his gifts. And can you imagine, like, you know, I hope he gets the, the, the support he gets to work through that trauma because, I mean, at six years old, what's going to happen, right? Nobody ever talks about these things. Nobody ever questions about what's going to happen to them and we have to bring these up right versus constantly talking about the shooter had a manifesto the shooter was this the shooter was that and it's like the shooter didn't have to do that right like he could have not have to do that but you know i mean that's a whole other story but i mean it's really important to bring these issues up you know api heritage month is great to celebrate achievements but it's also very important to talk about the issues we still go through and i know sometimes it's frustrating because once May is done, it's like people forget we're Asian. You know, we have to realize we're Asian every single day of the year and we have to celebrate and talk about these issues every single day of the year. I think we definitely need to talk and address about it. And um, one of the things that I am really kind of glad to see and I want to share is that sometimes we have to make the first move and um, before we can actually rip the result, because despite fear, despite, you know, oh, do I belong or, you know, something like that. So one of the things that I wanted to definitely share is that I was really surprised, but pleasantly surprised that I was appointed as the one of the vice chair of the PTAP Bar Diversity, Bar Association Diversity Committee. And when I, but there's so many things going through my head at the time when I got an email and said that, oh, you've been appointed, can you accept your appointment? I was like, who appointed me? <laughs> Not an attorney <laughs> in the Bar Association. Um, so I really think that, I really think that I need to turn off that phone. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I really think that it has actually, it gives us hope in it gives us a lot of hope that, you know, as we are trying to make sure that we voice our opinion, other people, whether they actually like or not, I really don't, you know, I post a lot on social media, but I've learned that really I make a conscious effort of not really paying attention to the likes because I really would get very, it would defeat the purpose of why I'm posting. I do it based on what Seth Rodin does, um, who you know, that is the marketing guru. And basically he said that he posts daily because that's the discipline that he does. And if, when you get in the, get in the um, habit of counting the likes and the quantity over the quality, that's when we kind of lose, you know? And so that's really important. But when I learned that, for example, the diversity chair, Karen Durrani and I had a chat when we were putting it together, the DEIA panel for next month, he was, I was like, I don't know who actually appointed me. I'm not an attorney. And, but kind of, I was kind of growing up in that particular hierarchical structure um, in the industry that, you are staff or you're an attorney. You know, when you're not an attorney, then you like, first of all, I would never join a bar association if I was still working for a law firm. Because it's like, where do you actually belong? 
but now coming out to do my own thing, when people ask me, like, why do you do certain things? I'm like, why not? You know, it's really just two words. Yeah. You know, what is actually, like, I have a lot of, I had a lot of limiting beliefs that I have to overcome. And that's one of the reasons that I really want to, like, thanks to you and a lot of other thought leaders that I've actually followed, like Adam Grant, um, who is this? Kristen Hadid, Sasha Strauss. A lot of these people are so amazing. John Maxwell, of course. And a lot of these people are so amazing in kind of helping us see through the limiting beliefs that the society had and culture too, that had instilled in us, that basically hinder us from going forward. And I thought that that's one thing that I really want to use my company as a vehicle. I mean, I do work sometimes. Because <laughs> I have to make sure that I can actually pay for my fees, my expenses, and also my team. And I really do enjoy that level of freedom and being able to connect with amazing people. I mean, even just the podcast, I have I have like connected with so many people that I would never think that in my wildest dream that they would say yes to be interviewed on our, on my podcast. But they did. So, you know, and and you prepped us for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of wanted to see if there are anyone on um I don't I don't really see the chat, but how do we know if uh, if there's people that actually have questions? Do we see the questions, Caitlin? If there's any questions? If not, I, I don't want... have any questions so far in the chat, but I'll let you know if they come in. This is a quiet trial, except for me and <laughs> Sheena. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, you know. I can't believe an hour's already gone by so fast. I hope, you know, the people attended enjoyed the conversations, helped them learn a little bit. And didn't you have something um, special that you want to do? <laughs> so I have autograph books, five copies of this. So now this is your chance. Um, <laughs> I'm going to basically stir up some engagement here. <laughs> um, from the chat, if and Kaylin can read just in case I cannot uh, see e anything on this. When does, so we have five copies. I'm going to randomly ask five questions. And the first response will be able to, five copies of her Asian Women Who Boss Up book that is autographed. The first person that responded on the chat, via the chat, will get the first copy. And we'll have five questions, five books. So the first question is, when does the Dow of Self-Confidence uh, launch? When is when is the launch day? If you're paying attention. Helen, do we have any tickers? Not yet, but remember there's a little bit of a delay. So. Okay, second question. Where does Sheena Yapchen currently reside in? Third question. Who is one of her favorite Asian women actress? She talk about it on social media all the time. And when did, let me see, where did Sheena actually attended her sister wedding last year? Well, I 
think I see some people commenting in the LinkedIn uh, profiles. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, we have a couple, a couple right answers so far. So there we have a couple. Okay, Kaylin, you'll record it because I'm going to think of the fifth question. The fifth question is, what is the name of Sheena's podcast? <laughs> I hide my background. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Cheating is okay too. <laughs> we accept everyone. No, no, I'm saying my virtual mm -hmm. background because it has the answer. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I accept at, or any kind of answer. We're trying to stir up engagement, remember? Oh, it's yeah. A quiet right. group. <laughs> yeah, I see people um, um, commenting. So, <laughs> yay. All right. Do we have five people? We have at least three. We have yeah. lots of correct answers, but only three individual people so far. So, oh, now four. Okay. We just need one more. And then after that, we're done. <laughs> Ashina, I want to thank you for taking the time to do this. I'm really, really proud of you and proud to call you a friend. Yes. And um, we'll have to do more, do things more often. And we also have to wing it more often. Yes. You know? <laughs> I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you so much for having me as a guest. You know, it's been such a fun conversation. Like I said, I'm really grateful for you, Ashley. You are such an amazing human being and very supportive. And like I said, every day I'm really grateful for your friendship and your support. You've been such a great, um, you know, just a great support system. You know, and I just wanted to let you know that. And to anyone who hasn't connected with, with Ashley, make sure you connect with her on LinkedIn. She's phenomenal. Um, for those of you who haven't gotten a book, make sure you pre-order this book on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Walmart, in Canada, Indigo and Amazon. So I hope you enjoy reading the book. And if you happen to see me in person with the book, I um, may just sign it for you. So yeah. <laughs> And we also have like our raffle, like this is week three of our raffle. And then I wanted to make sure, make sure I, I still can talk right now because I just kind of yank my headphone. Um, but we will have week three uh, raffle of the Dow Self Confidence. And it, it, I hope that it will be autographed. But once we get the copies, and uh, we'll do our week three raffle. So besides this five folks of Asian women who boss up, we also have another opportunity to just follow social media and like, subscribe and follow instructions. Not too, deep, not too difficult. Um, on that note, if we have the five people, I think we could call it a day because I need to do some work. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sheena. Uh, amazing and thank you everyone who joined um, this podcast and I hope that this has been enjoyable and that you have this helped you you know increase your self-confidence and um, a lot of you follow like Sheena and um, she's an amazing woman so obviously that's that's a no-brainer um, but this is said important this is a re important um thankful to be able to have a community um, that support each other and if you feel ever feel like that you need to have if you ever feel like that you are really alone you're really not so reach out and kind of just be courageous and then you could probably find the support that you need so on that note happy AAPI month